Hi Smart fans, how are you doing? Let me self turn right down there. Blasted out in my own headphones there. How are you doing this uh, Sunday evening? So, um, are you looking to build your own robot? Don't know where to start, um, what you'll need or how to go about it? Well, you're in the right place. So this is the Getting Started with Robots um, series and we'll be looking at Smart's robots, which we have a small collection of just over here. So we're going to get started in a second. So let's just move over to 
if I can find the right button. Okay, so my name is Kevin. Um, come with me as we learn how to build robots, bring them to life with code and have a whole load of fun along the way. Um, so <laughs> a bit out of sorts, I've had such a day today, which I'm going to tell you all about um, shortly, uh, but all good stuff, all related to robotics. Um, so let's get over to our keynote and let me get, oops, to the right spot. There we go. So we just need to do the screen share. And there we go. So I go to screen share. There we go. I'll just move me out of the way. We don't need to see me. And let's just make that a little bit bigger. Okay. So this is all about the code today. So over the past couple of weeks, we've been printing out the robots. We've been um, wiring up all the electronics. We've been looking at how you go about um, assembling the robot as well. And today it's all about how we get code loaded onto our SMARS robot. So if you're following along with this session, what you'll need is um, uh, the SMARS robot itself. You'll need a USB cable. So I have one over here um, just ready to go. And this is plugged into my computer that I'm using just off screen as well. And um, you will also need um, the IDE, which is, uh, if I share my screen and move over to the Arduino app. And we just make that the active app. Let's just go over to that. We have uh, the Arduino IDE loaded and this I'm using a, a, an Apple Mac. So uh, we shall look, look at that code shortly. So let me just jump back to Keynote. I don't know why it's complaining about key not no beep open. There we go. Okay, so so <laughs> let's just go through the absolute basics of how to do this. So we need to connect our USB cable up to the computer and then onto the the Arduino itself, which is part of the SMARS. So if I go over to our SMARS cam, um, if I take this robot here, for example, you can see there's this great big uh, square shaped USB cable. I think is it USB A? I'm sure, somebody can correct me in the uh, comments if that's incorrect. So that's now plugged in and you can see it's, um, it's running some code at the moment, which we will shortly look at. Uh, and it's just running its wheels forward slightly. So you can see there, I've put my hand in front of the sensor, the wheels reverse direction. So there we go. That's what we need to do to plug that in. So let's go back over to Keynote. I'm going to complain about that again, of course, isn't it? Let me just uh, do that manually in that case. So we want to screen share. So um, if you haven't got the Arduino IDE, um, what you'll need to do is head over to arduino.cc uh, and download a copy for yourself. Uh, it's completely free. They do ask you to uh, make a donation uh, because it's like a charitable organization, not for profit. Uh, so if you get good value out of the um, RDE, um, itself, you know, make a donation. They do have a web-based version, um, but I'm using the, the desktop app for now because it's one I'm most familiar with. Uh, but there is a, a web version which works with things like Chromebooks. So if you have a Chromebook, I think you, you can use that too. So let's go over to what we need to do. So what code are we going to load onto this SMARS? Um, Rather than starting from absolute scratch, we did a series um, called Bringing Smart to Life with Code, uh, which used the Arduino IDE. And we looked at things like movement, how to move it backwards and forwards. We looked at how to avoid objects by detecting distances using the, um, the sensor at the front, um, making it be able to detect objects, turn around and then carry on going. We looked at remote control with Bluetooth uh, and a phone. And we looked at the line following module where you can uh, follow a, a line around a um, a floor. Uh, we also looked at two other things as well. We looked at servos, so we can make a robot walk if we want to with um, some servos or actuators. And then we also looked at positioning sensors, which was all around um, you know, understanding where the robot is in 3D space. So can we detect it actually moving um, in any orientation? 
So we're not going to look at any of those today. We're going to look at something new. We're going to look at um, the follow me code. So this code is quite straightforward. Um, it will measure the distance um, it, it, using the rangefinder module. Um, it will then move forward if the distance is greater than 10 centimeters, as in the coast is clear and there's nothing in the way. It's then going to measure the distance again in the loop. If it detects that there is something, an obstacle in the way, uh, it will stop if the distance between uh, it and the object is between 5 and 10 centimetres. And if the distance is even shorter, if it's 5 centimetres or less, it will go backwards. And what this will actually mean is that our robot will follow um, our hand or another object or another smiles in front of it. Um, and it's quite an interesting way that we can we can actually test out how we got everything wired up correctly. Are our motor spinning in the right direction? Does the rangefinder actually detect a distance? Um, so it's quite an interesting little program to try. So I thought we'd create this one brand new. Um, I have put a link in the video description for this um, to the, the repository on GitHub if you wanted to download the code yourself. Um, so if you want to follow along, you can do. But we'll actually be going through the code pretty much line by line in a moment. So one of the things I thought I would do a little bit differently on this, this video, um, there was quite a bit of talk about the, the actual motor shields themselves um, when we were doing the code last week. So if I just go over to the, uh, the overhead camera, you can see these four smiles have actually got um, a different motor shield each. Let me just uh, make them all sort of roll on the screen there. So we have the official um, Arduino motor shield, that's this one here. We have my favourite one, which is the Fundumoto. Uh, it's my favourite because it has the built-in rangefinder connector header there. And it also has a little buzzer built on. Uh, and it's a nice little board all in one. I've recently purchased this one, um, which is very similar to the official um, Arduino motor shield. It's electrically identical, I believe. Um, it just looks a little bit different. It hasn't got these nice white connectors, but it does have all the exact same headers there. And then at the very end, we have this... Um, uh, is it HK HM Electronics one? I call it the one with the three chips on the top. Um, so one of the things that um, is going to exclude this one, unfortunately, from this um, series is if you look at this, there is actually no way we can connect any pins into the header on this. All these pins here are flush with the board; they're just soldered. So there's no way we can actually connect anything in there. So our little rangefinder here, it's got nowhere to go. So unfortunately, that particular motor shield won't be able to be used for this uh, particular use. Uh, all the other ones however have somewhere where we can put the pins um, into the top so that we can use our range finder. I was going to leave that little fellow just spinning around there doing his code. So what I wanted to do then to, um, to be able to detect which kind of motor shield that we're doing within our code uh, I thought I would use some new um, a new technique which is the define technique. So what we can do within our IDE, we can use this hash define tag and we can say, um, we can give a variable. So we can say define official Arduino shield or we can say define Fungimoto shield. And then later on in our code, we can check to see which one of these is the one that's been, um, that's been uncommented. So you can see here, this one is uh, uncommented at the moment, whereas this Fungimoto one is commented out with the slash slash. So that's kind of like a switch and that's all we need to do. Our code is exactly the same. We can just make one change there depending on which motor shield that we're actually using. So we'll try this in a minute with all these different um, um, these, you know, the, the, these different motor shields. So you can see there on screen there, uh, we've got the define official Arduino shield. We've got the uncommented Fundimoto shield there. And then we have this block of, um, of code here that says if def, which is the define, if def, official Arduino shield. So if this one is uncommented, then define all these things. And essentially these just define some constants. So motor A speed, three, motor B speed, 11. And these are the pins that we use. And these pins, I think it's actually only the motor A speed one that's different between the official and the Fungimoto one. But if we had different motor shields with different configurations, this is how we could easily put all these into one block of code. And then all we need to do is just uncomment the correct one. Uh, when we come to plug it in and, and flash the code. So that's what we're going to do in a moment. And we're going to try it out for each one of the, uh, the three that we've got um, on the table next to me. So let's have a look at the code. So let me get over to the Arduino itself. 
So hopefully you can see that screen there. Let me see if I can actually make it zoom in a little bit. Um, let's see if we can get it to, there we go. Zoom in a little bit more. Can we make it centered a bit? I think that'll have to do. I've, I've um, increased the size of the font within the IDE, so you should be able to see that OK. And let's put me on there as well. There we go. Hey. OK, so let's have a look at this code. So I wrote this um, um, just in September, uh, and it was really just so I could test out um, have I got um, the, the smiles that we were building, have I got that configured and wired up correctly. Um, so. So let's go to the very top then. So the first thing is defining what kind of shield we're going to use. So let's start with our Fungimoto one. Um, so if we just quickly look at the overhead screen there. So this Fungimoto one, which is on the on my left, I think it's on your right as you're looking at it. Um, that one is the one that we're going to do first. So what we need to do back over on our code is we need to uncomment out Fungimoto one and comment out the official one. And that's all we need to do there. And what that means is it will ignore this block of code here and you can see what it would do. It would define some motors, it would define some speeds um, and it would define um, a string that's called official Arduino. So instead it is going to run this one because uh, um, motor shield is defined. So we can see it's going to set the, uh, the right pins there, 10, 11, 12 and 13. It has a buzzer as well so we've defined that as an extra and it's defined the string Fundimoto as the motor shield. And we're going to print that out in our setup code just so that we can see when we plug in any of these which one it's actually running. So the next block of code looks at um, just configuring the rest of the pins so the trigger and the echo which um, if you remember they're from the, um, the rangefinder module so they allow it to send out a signal and then hear it back so it's like a, a microphone and a speaker so it speaks out its echo and it listens back I think with the trigger. Uh, we then have um, two variables one for duration um, and one for distance, and they're used within this ping thing so we can work out how far away something actually is. Next up we have um, an integer. Um, an integer is just a number, if you remember from the um, Bringing Smart to Life with Code series. Um, and waiting milliseconds is just a default amount of time that we've decided within this block of code that we can use for any kind of waiting activity. And we might want to make that faster or slower um, depending on how long we want it to wait. So a shorter time is a shorter delay. So the next bit is the ping. Um, so ping will return a value. Um, it's going to return the, the distance. Uh, and what all these things in here do, so digital write to the trigger pin, that will um, tell the, the trigger pin to ping out um, a signal. Um, it will then wait for two microseconds, very, very short amount of time. It'll then um, make the trigger pin um, high, wait for 10 microseconds, trigger it low um, and then we can work out using this duration equals pulse in echo pin high so that little line of text there that little line of code that will calculate um, the time it took to send out the pulse and for it to echo back if there was anything um, right in front of the sensor or up to about four meters away from the sensor uh, the next line here distance equals duration and then times 0.034 4 divided by 2 is 0 0.034 is the speed of sound divided by 2 because we want to send a signal out it hits something and then it comes back so we need it to do that uh, ping and bounce back and I think we looked at that last week we had a little video of um, of that in action so if you want to see that just uh, look at last week's video and then finally we return that distance that we just calculated and that's the distance in centimeters um, and it's an integer, so it's a whole number. It's like one centimeter, two centimeters. It doesn't give like point something of a centimeter. It's not that accurate. Uh, it could be, but we decided to just use an integer. The next block of code then is about beep. So we want to use our little onboard buzzer and we want it to make a, a beep sound. And I thought maybe we could use this as, as a kind of audible um, signal to see how far away something is so it could change the, the beep pulse you know so it could beep 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 depending on the distance that you were away from an object we'll see how well i did with that in this code um and it's wrapped around this is def if defined piece as well so if we haven't defined buzzer further up um it'll just ignore this block of code 
Um, and all we do with the buzzer there is we, we set the buzzer to high, the buzzer pin, which is pin four, I think, on the um, moto shield. We then wait for our milliseconds and we divide that by the distance times two. And that's where this, um, um, it will, depending on what the distance is, the sound of the beep will change. So that may or may not work, we shall see. And then we've got a couple of blocks of code for movement. So the first thing we do on this forwards one, um, so this doesn't return any value, it just um, tells the robot to move forward. So first of all, it just prints out to the serial port, um, move forward, forwards. It then um, does a digital write to the motor A pin and the motor B pin. So if you remember the, the two motors, I've just got two motors just in little baggies here. Um, so these things are kind of um, the opposite way around. So one's facing one direction, one's facing the other direction. So that means we actually have to spin them in opposite directions and that's why one's high and one's low. Um, we then do an analog write to set the speed of the motors. We can actually configure how fast and slow the motors go, but we just do full speed, which is 255 bits. We then wait for the uh, waiting milliseconds and then we do the um, analog write to the speed to set it back to zero so it stops. So it's going to move for the number of milliseconds that we've told it before, which was, was it 10, I think, and then it's going to stop. And moving backwards is exactly the same, apart from uh, instead of motor, high, motor A being high and motor B being low, um, motor A is low and motor B is high. So it goes in the opposite direction. So it spins the motors the other direction. So that's what forwards and backwards do. Then next we have um, the setup code. So this always runs just once when the uh, Arduino is plugged in. And what this will do is set up the serial port. So serial.begin 9600. 9600 is the baud rate. That's the speed at which um, the Arduino communicates to your computer. Baud is a very old fashioned um, calculation and it's just how many, uh, is it how many bytes or bits per second are transferred over the cable, over a serial cable. And serial um, is literally on or off. So it's quite basic. So um, next up we have the uh, the echo and trigger pins. So we uh, we just set them as outputs and inputs. That's what that means there. Because um, one's going to output a signal, one's going to receive a signal. So we just need to know are we listening or are we talking. Then we set the motor pins up A and B. So they're both outputs because we're going to output a value to them. And then if we have a buzzer, so if we have the Fungimoto shield, we can set the buzzer as well, which I think was pin four. And we're going to say if there is a, mo uh, a buzzer, do a beep. Do a beep for ten. So... That's it. We, we'll see what happens um, when we plug our um, Fungimoto in. And then what we then do is we say print line smiles robot follow me code. And we then say the motor shield type is, and then the motor shield which contains the value that we commented out before or uncommented. So it'll either say official Arduino or it'll say Moto Fungimoto. And then finally we get to our code. So if I just go back to our keynote and we just have a look and see what we were trying to do. Oops, let's ignore that. Um, with our, our code, we're gonna measure the distance. We're gonna move forward if it's greater than 10. We're gonna stop if it's between 10 and five. And we're gonna move backwards if it's less than five. So that's what we want our, our code to actually do. So let's go back to uh, where's it gone, the Arduino? So here we go. So the first thing, we check our distance. So ping returns the distance in centimetres. That's the first thing. We then just write that out to the serial port just to say the distance is, and then the distance variable. And then we say, if the distance is less than five, we want to go backwards. So we just write to the serial again, we're going backwards. If the distance is greater than 10, we want to go forwards. So we print line forwards and we do the command forwards. Or if the distance is greater than 5 and less than 10, it's greater than or equal to 5 and um, less than or equal to 10, then we stay still and we beep. So in the case of the uh, Fundimoto, we should hear some kind of beep. So uh, let's plug this in and then let's uh, see what we need to do next. So I'm just going to head over to the... Uh, I'm going to unplug this one for a moment. I've got a little... Um, um, chassis that I'm not actually using here at the moment. I'm just using that to sit them on just so they don't roll off the table while I'm uh, programming them. Little hack there. Right, so I'm going to plug this in. It shouldn't do a continuous beep. Right, and you can see it's just sort of edging, edging forward a little bit there. 
can see it's actually doing something. So let's actually flash this code because I have already loaded this just to test it out. Um, so let's just include me on there again in a second. So yes, I have uh, tested this already. That's why it's uh, already loaded, but we're gonna, we're gonna go through the steps that are required now. So let's just do that. So the first thing we need to do is we need to go to the tools menu and we need to, let's see if you can see that. Yep, yeah, we need to check that the board is an Arduino Uno or compatible. And we need to check that the port is a serial port. So on a Mac, it's always this bottom one here, this WCHU USB serial. So if I do that, um, it's just reset the Arduino. I'll just ping that again, there we go. And you can see it says, uh, if I just stop the auto scroll for a second there, we could see it says Smiles Robot, follow me code, motor shield type, Fungimoto. But we haven't loaded one in there yet. It's just telling us what's currently, you know, the the, um, the Arduino is just telling us what's going on at the moment. So let's have a look um, uh, what we need to do next. So so we've selected the, uh, the board type, we've selected the, uh, the port. Uh, what we need to do now is compile the code. So we click this little tick and that means it'll uh, check through to make sure that the code doesn't contain any errors. It'll compile it, which means changing it from a human readable text into um, machine readable machine code. It makes a little .hex file, which it then transfers across to the, um, the Arduino. So what we need to do now is upload. So we press that. And if we go to, let me try and split the screen here and see if this works. Um, so let me just make sure that's on there. So we can see this now running. The motor shield has got little green lights on it, which means it's, um, as far as it's concerned, there's nothing in front of it. Um, it can't detect anything. If I just bring an object kind of towards it, so I've got, um, if I go to the complete overhead thing there, I have just off screen here another smiles. I'm just going to slide towards it. Let's move this back a little bit. There we go. And as I move this towards it, you can hear the beep changing. Now it's now between five and ten centimeters. So it stopped spinning its wheels, and if I go even closer, it'll then start to try and go backwards. So it's now going backwards. So if it was if we just actually try it live like this. It will go forward until it finds an object. It then stop. If that object goes in front of it, it should try and bounce backwards. Try and do it like that so you can actually see it. If you try it with your hand, that's usually a better collector. There we go. Just put that back on this little thumb. So it doesn't go anywhere. Right. So that was um, that was a Fujimoto board. Um, so you can see there from the, the type of motor shield that's on top, that's a Fujimoto board. That's what they look like. I think it says on it the corner just there. Fujimoto. You can see that clearly, but it does. Okay. So next up, I'm gonna unplug that one. And I can just plug the power in there and it'll carry on. That's, that's the full speed that it goes up <laughs> quite fast. So next up, we'll do the official um, Arduino motor shield. So I don't know if you can see that. Uh, that one's got the official logo just there. It's got the uh, sort of figure of eight infinity thing. So let's put that there. Let's plug it in. So let's go back to our code. Um, so screen share back to our code. So at the very top, we need to change that it's not using the um, Fujimoto shield, but it's using the official one. So we just uncomment um, the un the official Arduino shield and we comment out Fujimoto shield. That's all we need to do. So now what will happen is it will run this block of code instead of this block of code because this string has been defined. And what this changes is which motor pin it uses. So just to show you what would happen if we didn't do that, so if we just leave that as the Fujimoto one, upload that code there. So let's go back to our three-way split for a second. Can you see that only one side of it is actually running? Um, 
let's just make sure we've got um, the right port selected because I don't think we did that. When you unplug them, it has to detect it again. Uh, there we go, uploading, done. Right, so what will happen is only one of the motors will actually start working um, if it's going to work at all. So let's just do that. that. So is it going to do anything at all there? It doesn't seem to be doing anything there, so why is that? I would expect it to at least try to, to run there. Let's see what's going on. There we go. So only one side is working, and that's because the Fungimoto shield uses pin 10 for motor A speed, whereas the official one uses pin 3. So that code is not going to work, that's why we need to change this line on here. So let's go back to our line of code, let's comment that out, comment that back in there, and then let's re-upload it. And we should see when it's, uh, when it's uploading, it just stops for a second, and then once it's finished doing it, both of them actually do now run. Now it hasn't got quite enough power there, so let's just uh, give it a bit of a boost. There we go. So you can see now both of the motors are actually running. So what was happening there, the reason I had to plug in this, uh, this little cable, um, the USB cable is providing 5 volts to the Arduino, but it's not providing enough ampage, it's not providing enough juice to the, uh, to the robot. Uh, and the little 9 volt battery that we have connected um, to this uh, wire that I'm holding now, when we plug that in, that gives it plenty of power. Now, it doesn't overwhelm, it's got the, um, the circuitry in there to limit the power, the power regulators. So only 5 volts goes to the rest of the board, and it's intelligent enough not to, uh, to sort of blow its circuitry there. Um, but you can see there the difference it makes when we actually plug in our actual power. So that's how we can um, make the official Arduino work. Now let's try the very, the very last one, which is this one, which is a Deek Robot Motor Shield. So I don't know if you can see that Deek Motor Shield. So it looks very similar to the, uh, um, to the official Arduino one. If I get these, just go to the uh, overhead camera. If I put these side by side there. If you look at those two, they're actually very similar um, connector-wise, placement of component-wise. Um, so that should mean that we can just use the exact same code that we've currently just loaded, the official code. We can plug this in and we can flash it just by... Um, yeah, that seems to be working. So it's done uploading. And we can see both of the wheels are now turning correctly, meaning that it's accepted this. If we put something in front of it, it either goes backwards or it goes forwards or if we get the distance just right it should stop there we go so that's how we uh, we can load it to depending on which motor shield that we actually have there we go so I'm just gonna have a quick look at the comments and just see what um, people have uh, been talking about so let me just go over to uh, to me for a second and let's have a look at some of these comments. So I've got the uh, my uh, iMac screen in front of me so I can just have a quick look through here. So Dr. Elo was just having a, a quick bass passing by and saying hi. So he's somebody who uh, joined me on the um, the Live Every Day in August challenge that we did which was like a live streamer. So I'm trying to improve my live streaming skills um, through through this live streaming, um, live streaming pros which is a um, two people on YouTube, Loria, um, Pruchu, Pruchu, I can't say a name properly, Pratrucci, and David Foster. And both of them um, are live streaming professionals. They've been doing this for absolutely years. Um, and because technology has become cheaper and internet speeds and computers have become more capable, it's a lot easier for people such as myself to be able to live stream ourselves um, just using our equipment. Uh, however, if you want to do it professionally, you need to get much better equipment. So you can tell I've got a professional camera that I'm using there, um, which means I can blur out my background. Um, I can focus on things. If I hold something very close to the camera, the camera will snap into focus. You can see how blurred I look there. That's um, because I'm using sort of very professional camera there, Sony uh, 6400. A6400 and uh, I have one of these big ring lights as well just so that you know if you look in my eyes you can probably see a little like white circle there 
Uh, and that's because I've got this rig light in front of me. It's a bit like a makeup uh, light. But um, professionals use that kind of lighting as well. I do have some uh, very cheap IKEA lights here, <laughs> which is for doing like the overhead shots and whatnot. Um, and I'm just using a MacBook, which is it's not fantastic. It's uh, getting on a little bit. And I have got my Stream Deck as well next to me, which I use to sort of change scenes and things. Um, so, and the microphone I'm using as well, that's uh, very important that we get good quality sound. So you can see I've got this little shock mic thing here. So the microphone is mounted in this shock mic thing. And if I move the arm around, it doesn't make too much um, too much noise when I do that. Uh, I know I've not quite got the sound levels perfect yet, so that's one of the things I'm going to be working on um, in some of the live stream coaching that I've uh, taken on board. So, um, so Dr. Elo is one of the uh, the colleagues, one of my counterparts who's been uh, learning to live stream. Um, he's very professional already, so uh, he dropped by and he just said. Um, Hey Kevin, happy Sunday, passing by, um, saying hi my friend. So really appreciate you stopping by. I know you watch it with your, your kid as well. Um, who doesn't want to watch things about robots? <laughs> and Sid says, my tea's nearly ready, got you on in the background though. Awesome, yep. I know for different people uh, around the world, it, it can be um, different time zones. Um, I've got the, the different time zones on the Apple Watch to try and figure out who's watching when. Um, so that's, uh, yeah, something that's interesting to try and get used to. But um, 7 p.m. on a Sunday currently works okay for me. If uh, I'll have a look and see, you know, what works best for everyone and maybe shift the time if that works. Um, but I also have a day job, Monday to Friday, so I'll not be able to do anything during the day. Um, not for the foreseeable anyway. So who else have we got on here? We have, um, so Dr. Elo was saying he loves the music. Yep, Epidemic Sounds. It's a royalty-free music that we uh, pay a subscription for. Um, Thomas says, uh, don't have the time to watch tonight, but big thumbs up for doing the series, mate. Really appreciate it. Oh, thank you very much, Thomas. Really appreciate you uh, saying that. And um, <laughs> Sid says, we need to do a bit of WD-40 on them wheels. Absolutely. One of the things I have as well is some silica gel. Um, I think it's in my bottom drawer of this. Uh, uh, this um, all my robot gubbins are in this chest of drawers next to me. And um, I've got some silica gel, and that works quite well. But... Um, I know the the new SMARS, does that use, um, what's the word I'm looking for? You know, the ball bearing things. Um, no, my mind's gone. The things that you have in 3D printers, um, it's like a bearing. Um, I'm not sure that they use that or if it's just plastic on plastic, but that's the issue. We've got plastic just sort of rubbing around the plastic. So you do get these sort of squeaky squeak things going on. And that's one of my oldest SMARS. It's, um, it's it's been through the wars a little bit, this one. This one is one of the first ones I printed out. If you look at the quality of the, the face on the front, if I can just get that into focus, look how terrible that looks. And that's because I used to use glue. I used to use, um, is it Yoohoo or Pritt Stick Glue? Um, got it in my drawer next to me. I used to use this Pritt Stick Glue. Um, come focus. Um, which is just like a white glue. And I would put this onto the bed of my uh, Anet A8, and I would print things off. But then it would leave a horrible, you know, surface to the uh, to the robot. Um, I've got an Ender Pro 3 now, so that I don't do that on there. It's got a much better build surface. But you can see the uh, the tracks on this are a little bit baggy. I've even got the uh, screw in our screwless modular robot. And um, what else have we got on there? That's yeah. Sometimes the uh, I think this has even been re-glued. This little end sometimes cracks off. It's a bit of a weak spot. Let's see if we can get that in focus. And you can just see there's like a little line just there. You can see that. It actually snapped off there. Sometimes that happens. So that one's in the walls a little bit, but um, still going, <laughs> still working. So um, yes, what I want to show you next then is a bit of an update on uh, what's been going on with the, the Smars Studio. So. Um, as you may know, I'm uh, looking to build a brand new studio, a home office um, at the bottom of my garden. And we've been spent all weekend um, working on this. So I just want to show you um, some of the things that we've been getting up to. So if I go over to here and give you a studio update. So let's go to screen share. So um, this is where my new robot lab is going to be. What should we call it? Smars Lab? 
Um, so where on the, the left hand picture there we've got the greenhouse. Um, we've taken the greenhouse down and that entire patio is going to become a brand new studio location. It's about three, three, and, a three, three and a bit meters by three meters. Um, so it's a nice big space. I can have a 3D printer in there, all the robot equipment and so on. Uh, and you can see there, there's a couple of contractors working on the, the pitch on the right, um, digging a great big trench all the way up to the, the garden. You can see on that one there, that's where we had the greenhouse and then we've removed it. And I nicked down to our, our B&Q, I think, is it Lowe's, you call it? Home Depot, it's that kind of thing, of the hardware shop. So I've got myself a nice uh, new drill, plenty of bits and bobs. And uh, you can see there the um, that cable we have uh, on the screen there. So then... We had to have this trench dug all the way through the garden. You can see on that picture on the left there. And uh, there's my wife Jenny with all lots of <laughs> wires dangling down onto her head. So I have in, in the loft at the very the highest point of my house, um, some switch equipment for, for networking. And I've got a couple of computers up there. They're probably gonna, gonna come to the, um, to the studio as well, actually. Uh, but that's currently where all the wires for the house go. So when I, when I redecorated this living room, um, over where the fireplace used to be. We don't have a fireplace anymore. And it's not very really environmentally friendly. Is it having a fireplace burning stuff? So uh, I use the conduit, the chimney to stick all the cables down. And um, this computer here has got a cable, you know, the Xbox and the TV has got ethernet cables. So it's all wired and it goes round the skirting boards. Um, so it's all ethernet and they're all, you know, they all go up into the loft into a, a big sort of switch um, cabling harness. Um, so that's where I thought, you know, it'd be natural to sort of take the cable from there, from the loft, out through the eaves of the house, down the side of the house, and then through the garden, along with some armoured cable for power. So we had the contractor um, lay out the, the armoured cable as well. So we had to have a brand new consumer unit and, you know, it's quite a big, big uh, piece of work going on there. So you can see there I've got the, uh, the blue cable, which has got the data cables within it. That's now in the trench. And it was so raining yesterday, it was absolutely throwing it down. So um, we got very, very, very muddy. I must have slipped on my my bum quite a few times and <laughs> got very muddy. Uh, there's another view there. You can see a sort of top down um, on the left just before we filled in the trench. And then on the right, we'd filled it back in. And um, it's just all mud now. So that was great fun. You can see there, <laughs> loads of mud. I think I need some new trainers. There's my little uh, doggy. That's Minnie. She's a little Chihuahua, um, Jack Russell Chihuahua, Jackawawa, I think they call it. And then the very end picture there is just the the reel of data cable. So, um, so yes, that's it for um, for this week. Um, next week we're going to be um, looking at a recap of what we've been doing over the past five weeks. So, week one we were looking at um, you know an overview of, the, of this sort of series of videos. Week two we looked at printing the parts, and we actually printed out this Mars that you can see just here. This is what we printed out um, uh, in week two. Week three we assembled it all together. Um, week four we wired up the electronics so all the motors we did some soldering we did some soldering live which was fun <laughs> i didn't know how that would work out but um worked out very well actually and then this week loading the code so we've looked at how to load code onto an arduino um smiles robot and bring it to life which was really exciting so next week um we talked about this last week didn't we we were talking about um what should we do next? So if I go back over to our overhead camera, not quite finished it yet, but we are going to have the um, forklift module. So we're going to see how that works out. So we've got one of our smiles looks something a bit like that. I had a bit of a disaster though, because um, I was printing it out and the spool of cable that I've got next to me on my 3D printer, in fact, it has snapped there. Um, it's got all tangled up, so it doesn't come off the reel properly. It'll get to a point where it's got twisted and it pulls and pulls and then just snaps. So I think this is dead, this one. I'm gonna have to either untangle it or I have a new one anyway. But what happened was it was printing out and I don't know if you can see on there, there's, um, you can see through just about there, there's a really weak bit and uh, it's literally printed by like a thread. Uh, anyway, it meant that, that that end there just snapped off completely. 
and uh, that, that essentially goes inside. Let's see if we can do this. That goes inside there, goes up and down, and then we have um, this thing will go inside that, as I understand it, so that you've got kind of a three things that move around within it to sort of give it some extra height. So then this can move within that too. And there's like a big screw thread that goes through all of them, and then there's um, which is powered by just one of these regular little motors. And we have a, a servo that can sort of tip it up and down as well, so that you can, uh, you can scoop things up and then move it about. So looking forward to doing that. That's going to be one of the modules that we look at. Might look at some other ones as well, but um, depends how quickly we can print these things out. This thing took a very long time to print. It's about 10 hours or something. I uh, have got it on sort of super quality, but um, yeah, it does take a while to print those things out. So if you're following along, you don't need to bring anything next week. You just need to uh, look and see um, where we are up to. You should have, if you have been following us along, you should have a fully printed out Smiles robot that's wired up. It's got all the electronics in it that you know how to run some code on it. So the code, um, I put a link into the description of this video already. Um, it's on GitHub, so you can get yourself a copy of that if you wish, if you want to see how it works. Um, was it Christopher Picard uh, on the Smiles community was looking at um, doing a similar kind of code on, on his, instead of it just going backwards when you put your hand in front of the sensor, his actually turns around and goes the other direction. So it's a bit like the avoid one, but he wrote that all himself, which is quite impressive. Um, especially if you've not if you've not done coding before and this is all new to you, you know, thinking like a robot, thinking like code is quite a new way of thinking. It's very logical, very step-by-step -step structured. Some people are more suited to it than others. Uh, I know that I've been doing it a very long time. I had a ZX Spectrum back in the day. My brother had a ZX Spectrum and I used to just play on it when he wasn't using it. And then I got my own eventually when he got an upgrade to a Spectrum Plus 3, the one with a little disc drive in it. So I got um, a Spectrum and put it into um, the bigger case, the Plus case. I still have the original Spectrum upstairs, so that might feature on one of our future videos. So what the, the the new studio will mean is that we'll be able to have, um, instead of you seeing these sort of stairs behind me, um, we'll have a proper studio with better lighting, specific areas where we can do builds, we can have 3D printers going. Um, and the software that I currently use, I use Ecamm Live, which is uh, for the Mac. And they're introducing a new interview feature as well. So um, I've spoke to two people who are quite interested in coming and doing an interview. It might not be live, um, though we could do a live interview. That's the actual creator of the Smiles, um, Kev Thomas himself, and also Camelio, who is the um, Otto DIY uh, founder. So I've got two people who are quite interested in coming on board and uh, sharing their passion in robotics too. So we've got some really good things for this channel um, to come in the future. So I can't wait for those things to happen. So that's it for the slides. Um, we do have um, the usual reminder like and subscribe. So please make sure you hit the like button. That again helps the YouTube algorithm detect that this is a good video and people are um, liking it. Um, please do comment if you're watching this on playback or if you're watching it live, you know, all every comment you make makes the algorithm think that there's good engagement. So that's always good. And if you hit the little bell button as well, you'll get notified whenever I release a new video. Uh, the live ones, you get the reminder anyway, I think. But um, I will be putting out more videos um, once we've got the studio built, which is um, the end of October, not far off. So uh, cannot wait for that. And then a comment of the week. So we had two comments this week. So Sid, I know you're watching. Um, you very kindly said, keep up the good work, mate. Um, and with Sam on this, forklift or rubber arm? So, forklift. Absolutely with you on that one. Let's just stop that music there. So, yes, we're definitely doing that. And um, uh, Tyron said, uh, this is great. I've got the motor driver board with the three chips on it, which is this one here. Um, can we link to that, how to set that up as well? And like I said, this one, it might just be the variety I've got, but because it's got these... Um, very flat pins there. There's no headers to actually put any uh, any DuPont cables into, so I've really struggled with that. Uh, it might be that there is a variety with the three chips on um, that works fine, but try what we've just gone through today. Try seeing it. Does it work with the Fujimoto or with the official um, Arduino um, pins? And if it doesn't, let me know, and we shall take it further from there. We could probably get it working. Might just require a little bit of soldering on my part. 
So thanks again very much indeed for commenting. Um, it really does help drive the engagement. And, uh, you know, these things stick around forever. That's the thing I like about this. Yeah. You know, people in the future will be coming back and going, oh, you know, they they knew each other back then. You know, there'll be uh, things to come in the future, I think, that um, as this channel sort of grows and grows. So let's get in there early, I think. <laughs> Great, so thank you for your contributions and your um, your engagement there. One of the things I was going to share with you, so sometimes I will put quite a bit of effort into these videos and then I'll forget to actually show you what I've been working on. And um, when I did the videos on, I'm um, just trying to bring up the, the scenes now, when I did the video on... Um, assembling the smiles and wiring up the um, the smiles I created two animations that I never actually used so one of them was soldering I'll show you it so this is the soldering one <laughs> you can see there she's sort of like uh, and then there's a sort of animation of it the solder going up and then the other one was the um, cleaning up so cleaning the parts so you can see there um, it's all sparkly clean now <laughs> so I created them in uh, uh, After Effects and I never actually used them, which is crazy. I uh, thought I'd share that anyway because I thought you might uh, enjoy that. So uh, yeah, there was just a little soldering lady. So there she is with the tongue stuck out, sort of... <laughs> and then she smiles. The amount of effort that goes into these things is just ridiculous, but I do enjoy it. Um, great stuff. So I think we're nearly at 8 o'clock now, so um, let's wrap it up there. And uh, I shall speak to you all next week and... Um, we can wrap up our series of getting started with robots and play with some new modules such as the um, forklift truck one and maybe the robot arm as well and see what we can get done. So thanks everybody for watching. I shall see you all next time. Bye.